This MX-5 is now three and a half years old and it's done over 27,000 miles. Not many miles then, it's still a baby, but 2,105 of those miles have been done on track. Sometimes for an hour at a time and sometimes on hot days with the air conditioning on. And the oil in this car has been in there for five months and done 3,500 miles, but 595 of those miles were done on track, so nearly a thousand kilometers. And I'm interested in how the oil is holding up after that much track time and how the engine is holding up after 16 track days. So I've gone to Miller's Oils and I have purchased this oil analysis kit. It cost me 40 pounds. It's not sponsored, this video is not sponsored, and I paid for this myself, and they don't know I'm making the video. In the kit is a bottle. You take a sample of oil from when you drain it from the sump. It's about, they need 80 mil, this bottle's 100 mil. So fill this up and you should be okay. You have a form to fill out and a sticker to put on the bottle. Then you put the bottle in this thing here, this tube and then they provide you with a prepaid postage bag to send it back. And it should take three to five days. Then they're gonna get back to me and tell me about the oil and the engine. They're gonna tell me about the oil's viscosity. Is that still in spec? Have the additives in the oil disappeared or are they still there? Is there any contamination in the oil such as antifreeze and fuel? And are there any wear metals in the oil to see how the engine's doing after the amount of track days this car has done? Firstly though, I need to get the engine up to temperature so that I can drain the oil. Everything's made so much harder when you're trying to film things. But car is in the air, the bottle is ready. I just need to take this sump plug off and then fill it up with oil. <laughs> Try not to allow it to get contaminated. It's a bit windy today, so kind of like need more hands to stop things falling over. So here we go. Undo the sump. Go on, there we go. And now let's get ready to catch this oil. I might just let the sump plug drop into the pan so that I've got my hands free. It's gonna come any moment now, hopefully not down my wrist. Go. And, oh, there we go, yep. I've definitely got a sample. Anyway, time to, oh no, it's going over my arm. Oh, great, all over my sleeve. Time to clear up and send this off to the lab. It's gonna take three or five days for me, but you're gonna know in a moment. Oh no, it's still going on my arm. Stop blowing on my arm. I'm on the wrong side. Ugh. When you change your oil, I recommend putting some cardboard under the engine. I usually do but I forgot today. Anyway, the oil that was in there is Manol 5W30, specifications API SN or a Kia A5B5. That is what is recommended in the owner's manual. You can put 0W20 in this engine. In fact, that's the first recommendation, but I use the higher number because I get this engine hotter than most people probably do. And I think the higher number is gonna be more stable when it's really hot. This is actually six weeks later now because I've been busy and I haven't had time, but I've got time now, let's do this. So I've got the results, Miller's Oils, very helpful. When I email them, they get back to me promptly and they answer the question. Let's start with viscosity. Now, the viscosity of the oil I sent off was 9.1 centistrokes. And a 30 oil tested at 100 degrees Celsius and it's 5W30 and as it's tested at 100 degrees Celsius, we look at the 30 number. 30 is important here, SAE 30, that should have a viscosity of between 9.3 and 12.5. So at 9.1, it is a little bit low, but Miller's oil say it's not anything to be concerned about. Um, the viscosity can go down when oil is fairly young and you put it into your engine because it gets diluted with fuel or even possibly water. And then as the oil gets older, the viscosity rises. However, it's not a concern for me with this engine because this engine can also accept 0W20 oil and the viscosity of 20 oil, SAE 20, at 100 degrees Celsius should be between 6.9 um, and 9.3. So we have a total range there of 6.9 to 12.5 and the viscosity of the oil I sent off was 9.1, which is comfortably within that range of what the engine can accept. That's why I use the 
oil with the higher viscosity that's recommended in the owner's manual, because there's two recommended. I choose the higher viscosity oil because I'm using it on track, I'm getting it hotter than most people, and I'm probably getting it hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. It's not just me who says that, um, that's actually advice that's been given to me. If you're doing track work and you've got choice of oils, choose the one with the higher viscosity. So that's what I do. When it comes to nitration, no signs of nitration, no signs of oxidation. Oxidation can cause sludge. No signs of water, 1% fuel, so 1% petrol, which is not good, but it's not bad either. It's kind of typical. You want it to be low, lower than 2% and you certainly want it to be lower than 3%. And there's no signs of soot. Now I'm gonna talk about the wear metals and the additives. And this is where, if I would have planned this video in advance, which I didn't, I planned it when I ordered this kit, which was about a week before I did the oil change. But if I would have thought about this video long-term and planned it in the future, what I should have done was sent off the oil when it was new for analysis and then compare it with the used oil. But I can't compare it with the new oil because I never did that. I've only got the used oil. So I don't know what was in the oil before it was used. And a lot of these things that are in the oil could have been in there when the oil was new anyway. Calcium and zinc, 0.2% for calcium, 0.1% for zinc. Is that higher or lower than when it was new oil? I don't know. They're probably wear additives anyway, not from the engine. Certainly calcium is not going to be from the engine. I mean, calcium I think may possibly be from a water leak in the engine, but I believe these are additives. However, it doesn't really matter because these numbers are so low anyway that whether or not the metals were already in the oil before the oil went into the engine or the metals came from my engine, they're so low that it doesn't really matter. They're not concerning either way. Let's go through the metals now. So chrome, zero. Lead, zero. Nickel, zero. Tin, zero. Boron, that is boron, isn't it, B, yeah? Eight. Now, boron's not come from the engine. Boron could come from, say, a head gasket coolant link, leak, uh, but there are zero signs of water in the oil. Boron can be an additive in engine oil. So that was probably there when the engine oil was new. Uh, iron, four parts per million. So that is probably where from my engine. There's a lot of iron in my engine. It's made of iron and aluminium. They're the primary metals. And four parts per million after three and a half thousand miles is the equivalent of a road driven engine. It's, it's very low. Driving this car on track does not seem to be wearing it out a lot quicker than a normal road driven engine. I can't compare it to a, another MX-5 not driven on track, but I'm comparing it to other oil analysis I've found online from what other people have done. And that seems like still a very low number. Molybdenum, if I can say that right, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. One part per million. That can actually be an additive in the oil but even if it wasn't, it's one part per million. My cylinder liners are made out of steel molybdenum, so it may be from there, but it's really low. Silicon, seven parts per million. Again, that can actually be an additive that was already in the oil, or it could actually come from the air. If you have a poor quality air filter, or one of those air filters which are quite free flowing that make your engine louder and don't filter the air as well, then that may put silicon or other contaminants into your oil because it gets through, well, it goes through the intake into your engine, gets burnt, and some of it will go blow by into your oil. But silicon can also be from sealants in the engine. Uh, my cylinder head is made from aluminium silicon. Maybe it could be from there, or maybe it was already in the oil. I don't know, but it's seven parts per million, so it doesn't really matter. Zero vanadium, no idea about vanadium. That's not, not something I know much about. Aluminium, four parts per million. So my engine is made of aluminium. So that is probably, that's not gonna be in the oil already. So iron and aluminium, those two things aren't gonna be in the oil already, or at least you hope they're not. And I've got four parts per million iron and four parts per million aluminium. So that's probably the wear from my engine. And I've got one part per million copper, which could also be an additive in the oil already. 
and I don't think that's going to be wear from the engine because I don't think my engine's really got much or any copper in it. I'm not sure what the bearings are made of, but usually the copper, if it is made of copper, is the inner part of the bearing anyway. So if copper was in the oil, you'd have loads of some other metal in there if it was chewing up bearings. I don't think that's happening. Seems absolutely fine. So Miller's oils, the viscosity is acceptable with an acceptable level of fuel dilution. Wear metals are at a satisfactory level. Very clean oil. So I'm quite pleased by that. So the conclusion is I can drive this car on track, full throttle, high revs, without causing excessive engine wear because these numbers on this analysis suggests a normal road driven engine. Four parts per million iron, four parts per million aluminium, 1% fuel dilution, nothing special there. That's the main thing I was worried about. I was thinking I'm driving this car on track a lot. Am I causing a lot more engine wear? Is there gonna be high levels of iron and aluminium in the oil? But no, there isn't. So that's good news. Should I be using race oil? Well, I don't think so because race oil is designed for race engines. And although I'm driving this car very hard, very fast, you could say possibly close to race speeds, although I'm not a racing driver, it's not a race engine. So it still needs its oil that's designed to be used in this engine. Putting race oil in it, I don't know what it will do to it. I doubt it's been tested with race oil, but the zinc, the ZDDP, I think it's called. Can't remember what it's called. I'll put it on screen, it's quite a long word. I know that, which is in race oils, can damage your catalytic converter. So I like to try and use the fluids that are recommended for this engine to make sure I don't cause any harm. If you found the video interesting, I know I did. I was very eager to get these results back. I was a bit worried that the iron and aluminium would be high, but no, I can enjoy this car on track without worry about that. If you found the video interesting like I did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.